This is a send in from a little project I did for a client about 20 odd years ago. I built some low power FM transmitters and audio processors and he sends me a processor and tells me it's not working. What this does is it limits the frequency response to 15 kilohertz and it apparently is not working so let's check it out. And what this is, is this called a brick wall filter. What it does is it limits the frequency response to 15 kilohertz so it stops everything above 15 kilohertz and it also has a limiter built in to clip so that the signal won't go too loud and that's again for someone who's using this with the transmitter um, some of them are still probably in use in small communities I built a couple of uh, low power transmitters under under contract for a company and uh, they were put in small remote communities to uh, as a translator to relay music services that were brought in from satellites so that the, these small communities of only a couple hundred people would have some uh, radio anyway um, this one came from an old friend that I built one for and um, he says it doesn't work and uh, I see that this one here has had some work done on it in the past I, oh I think that we took out the tone controls because it, we wanted it flat um, but um, anyway what this does is it is uh, supposed to supposed to uh, pass the audio signal through and just limit the frequency response to 15 kilohertz it's called an SCT1 yeah ST, or STC1 yes is the kit and uh, as you see there's quite a bit going on here you've got a couple of uh, max 291 op amps and uh, it does have a tone control, but it looks like the tone control may have been disabled on this. That's what it looks like here, because um, th there's a jumper wire that's been put in place here. I think that was to bypass the tone control. These capacitors were removed, or were they? Yeah, it looks like this capacitor was removed and a jumper wire was put in place over to this one. So I think, and these two here, looks like they were these two were jumpered together too so I have a feeling that that's what that was I forget I would have done this at the, at the time because I built this um, but I think what that was was that they wanted they wanted the, the tone control disabled because it wasn't being used to boost bass or boost treble they wanted it just to pass signal through what this was being used for was it was being used as a it was driving an FM transmitter but it was driving it into a closed circuit into like a cable um, system for and they wanted to limit the sound they, they were using it with a CD player and they wanted to limit the level so that it wouldn't over modulate and also because CD players typically uh, will output a signal at uh, around what 22 kilohertz now the reason you need such a device like this is that any frequencies that get anywhere near the 19 kilohertz pilot tone will beat with the pilot tone and cause all kinds of undesirable noise in your resulting FM uh, signal. So all commercial transmitters all have what's called a brick wall filter which will chop everything off from 15 or 16 kilohertz up. Usually it's 15 kilohertz and that is what this does. This this just processes audio. It, it allows the audio to pass everything from 20, kilo, or 20 hertz right up to 15 kilohertz and then it stops it at 15 kilohertz and it's it's used again when you don't want high frequency sound that could cause interference to in the case of an FM stereo transmitter to the pilot tone or if you're recording digitally um, you don't want your sound getting anywhere near your sampling rate anyway this one here was used um, in a closed circuit FM uh, signal that was sent over cable and it apparently is not working so the guy that I built this thing for 25 years ago shipped it down to me and said it's not working please fix it so <laughs> that's what I that's what I'm looking at well 96 night copyright 1996 and this was built right around that time so yeah okay 22 years 1996 because that's when that that's about the time that this thing came out and that was about the time that I did some work and built a few of these things um, for a few various people and I think I put five of these together and I built five 
little small uh, low power transmitters that were put up in the interior and put in service in small communities and they all were fed through units like this so that they would keep their uh, they would keep their signal within uh, spec anyway um, this thing apparently say it's not working I haven't turned it on yet so I've got it plugged just into my um, mp3 player and uh, we'll look at the signal going in the signal coming out and see if it's actually passing any signal through it so I'll turn it on and I've got a signal going through it and I don't hear anything so let me get my scope we'll take a look and see whether we're actually getting a signal through here. well this thing seems to be working I plugged it in turned it on and it's got sound going through it so I don't know why he sent it to me he said it he said it wasn't passing any sound but it appears to be passing sound just fine which is which is fine by me but we can play with this thing because you see we can, I can I'll put my audio generator on this thing we'll run it up and we'll watch on the scope see where it cuts out it should go right to 15 kilohertz and just drop off that's what it should do if it's working properly so let me just uh, grab my my uh, audio generator and we'll get that set up and uh, we'll try this thing out because as I say it was sent down to me and uh, I, was, I was told it wasn't working he said please fix it there's no sound going through it so maybe he's got other issues not related to this unit let me grab my audio generator and uh, we'll plug this thing into that and we'll just watch what happens when I crank up the frequency. So I've got the unit now connected to my audio generator. Don't worry when you see the waveform it might look a bit distorted because my audio generator itself has not been running that it's not been running for a while and hasn't even fully warmed up so I'm sure the waveform is not perfect on it but it'll give us an idea how it cuts off. So if I increase the amplitude you'll see when I get beyond the threshold it will clip and both the clip lights will come on that indicates that this thing is now limiting and if I continue to increase it will just flat top the waveform if we look at it on the scope as you can see as it, as I clip it'll just it'll just clip the top off but that's not what the big point of this unit is. okay right now we're at um, almost 13 kilohertz as I increase the frequency watch what happens it's going to just roll off very quickly and there we're at 16 kilohertz now and it's gone <laughs> nothing nothing there that's how the brick wall filter works if I go over and scope the uh, incoming signal over here here's the incoming signal you'll see that uh, as I increase the frequency it just goes up and up and up right that's that's up to like 60 kilohertz now probably hear that over the speaker too now right but uh, go to the output and the output here is uh, limited and as we go up there's 12 kilohertz 13 kilohertz 14 kilohertz and 15 kilohertz and then there we go by the time we get up to like 16 kilohertz, we're really attenuated. You can see how dramatic it is. It just drops like a rock. That's what they call a brick wall. It's called a brick wall filter, and that's what its job is. Its job is just to eliminate everything. This is kind of how a multiplex filter on tape decks worked as well. A multiplex filter did exactly or, or very similar it rolled off frequencies above 16 kilohertz or so or actually I think most cassette decks were probably lower than that they're probably more like around 14 kilohertz they would start to roll off and that was so that the 19 kilohertz pilot tone would not cause interference with the bias oscillator on a, a tape deck but uh, basically a cassette deck could go up as high as 19 kilohertz but you wanted to you wanted to roll that off it was the MPX filter is more like a notch filter to notch out the 19 kilohertz uh, signal so that the 19 kilohertz signal would not beat with the bias oscillator and cause all kinds of strange whistles and noises and stuff this one here is a low pass filter 
high pass or high brick, high cut brick wall. It uh, passes everything up to 15 kilohertz and then it roll. Watch, it starts to roll off at 15, and it's everything is completely rolled off by the time you get to just over 16 kilohertz. It was really quite uh, qu quite dramatic how quick it rolled off when I was looking at it there. You know, the, the roll-off starts, uh, let's see here, where's my roll-off starting? I'm at 12 kilohertz now, and it's, it's flat, flat, okay. Uh, right at 15 kilohertz, it starts to roll off if I go back to the scope. So I'll show you the, the frequency generator here. So at 14 kilohertz, I've got still got um, a full output, and it starts to roll off. Okay, they're starting to go down now, and it's gone, okay. Yeah, it's, it's gone down to nothing by 17 kilohertz. And everything above this is just nothing there. It's just blank. And as I get down, okay, I'm starting to see a little bit of a signal now, very, very low. And it's starting to come up now, and then uh, yeah, we're back to full signal. So uh, 14 kilohertz is where the roll-off starts, and it is completely gone by 17 kilohertz. That's a, that's a pretty sharp filter. So nothing above 17, but the the, the roll-off starts really quick. By the time you get to, let me just measure it here, and I'll see where we're down. When we're down 3 dB, I think it's like by 15 kilohertz, we're down 3 dB. Okay, so here's my, I've got my signal here, 600 millivolts, I'm on a times one probe. So 600 millivolts output at 12 kilohertz. Whoops, just bumped my probe there, let's fix that. There we go. Okay, we'll watch it until we get to 300 millivolts. So as I increase, now okay, we're now getting to 14 kilohertz and it's starting to roll off. We're at 15 kilohertz now and we got uh, 400 millivolts, so we've gone down from 600 to 400 millivolts. And now I'm at 17, just under 17 kilohertz. And now I'm at 17 kilohertz. So 14 kilohertz there. 15 kilohertz, 16 kilohertz, 14, 15, 16 kilohertz, 17 kilohertz, and it's pr pretty much gone. And then it drops right off at that. That's pretty sharp roll off, 3 kilohertz bandwidth from 14 to 17. We're going from 600 millivolts output to barely detectable. That's that's a pretty sharp filter. Anyway, I was hoping that there was something that I could uh, show you what was wrong with this thing because uh, to say it, it was sent in saying there's no sound and it clearly is passing a signal. So I'm going to have to get a hold of the guy that owns this and ask him exactly what his problem is. I think his problem is somewhere else in his audio chain and not in the uh, audio processor. Anyway, thanks for watching. Wish there was something to do on this, but hey, you guys got to see what one of these little brick wall filters does and what they're used for. Thanks for watching.